So last time, last time, this was the very last board that we saw last time. Last time we learned that we can represent a polygon with n vertices using a two by n matrix. Each column ij represents the point ij. And we can transform these shapes by plugging them into L of the column matrix XY equal, or L of the matrix XY equals ABCD, the two by two matrix ABCD times the input XY. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to get a handle on these transformations. We're going to learn what each transfer, we're going to learn about different transformation matrices and we're going to see how they work. So my plan for today is today we're going to today we're going to learn what the different transformation matrices look like for nice familiar transformations. So today we're going to learn about matrix transformations. Which means we're going to do a lot of graphing, hence why we're over here at the at the side table. Our objective is for y'all students will be able to describe the effects of matrix transformations involving familiar transformations. Whoa, OK. Title, objective. So today, we'll learn how to represent some familiar transform transformations using L of XY equals A, B, C, D times x, y. OK, yeah, we are recording. Great. All right. So go ahead. And make sure you get this down. All right, 
So let's get started. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? All right. Give me a shout if you need it back. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to start by transforming the unit square with L of xy equals 2, 0, 0, 2 times xy. So as a reminder, xy, that represents our input, and this is our transformation. Now, we actually did this particular transformation last time, but I wanted to do it again just so that it fits in into what we're, lo into what we're looking at here. You know, and actually, I am going to change this a little bit. Let's make, instead of twos, let's make these fours. All right. And for the sake of help making everything easy to see, I'm zooming in on our scale a little bit. So each tick mark is one half. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we would need to represent the unit square as a matrix. So the unit square has points at 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. So how are we going to represent this as a matrix? Well. Remember that we can represent a point ij as the column matrix ij, yeah? And each point, well, I don't really need this arrow here. And so each, I can use each point as one column of a 2 by n matrix. So this shape. can be represented with the matrix zero, 0, that's our first point. Our second point is 1, 0, then 1, 1, and then 0, 1. All right, so plug this into this guy. And we will have 4, 0, 0, 4 times this. All right. So let's go ahead and multiply these together. This is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 4, so, our, so, so its product will be 2 by 4. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 0 plus 0 is 0. Next row. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 plus 4 is 4. If you are ha having trouble multiplying these together, if you need more practice with the multiplying matrices, you can go back and review the multiplying matrix lesson. All right. So. Let's read off our points. So our first point is 0, 0, over 0, up 0. Our next point is 4, 0, over 4, up 0. Our next point is 4, 4, here. 
And our last point is 0, 4, over 0, up 4, here. All right, so what happened to our shape? It dilated. What was the scale factor of its dilation? How much did it dilate by? It dilated by four. So what we're going to do is we're going to make basically a big dumb list of different transformations. We're going to try this process with different transformation matrices and we will write down the results. And when we're done, we should be able to see every transformation that we're familiar with up to this point in matrix form. So uh, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? So it would seem that L of xy equals, well, it probably doesn't only work for 4. We saw last time that it worked for 2 as well. So k0, 0, 0, k times some input matrix. It doesn't have to be the unit square. This will dilate. the input by k. Cool. Now, let's try another one. I'm going to take this away, but it will come back. Let's transform the unit square with L of xy equals. So we did uh, 4, 0, 0, 4. Well, what happens if instead of 4, what if we have 1? Well, first of all, this is an identity matrix. And one of the things we learned was that when you multiply something by the identity matrix, it should cause no change. So I would guess that this won't cause any changes at all. But let's test that. Well, the unit square, we're going to be multiplying. Ah, so we're going to be multiplying 1, 0, 0, 1 by 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. OK, let's multiply them together. 0 and 0, well, that gives us 0. 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 0 is 1. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1, no, 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1. OK, here we go. So that gives us points at 0, 0, 1, 0, 
1, 1, and 0, 1. None of our points seem to have moved. It looks to be exactly the same. So this resulted in no change. So we'll add that to our big dumb list. Will anyone yell at me if I cover this up a little bit? No one's yelling me at me yet. OK. this causes no change. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. This is essentially dilating by one, and dilating by one means nothing is changing, means it's the same size. All right. OK, will anyone yell at me if I take any of this stuff away? Well, which one do you need, Devon? The top one or the bottom one? While you're copying that down, I'll get started on the next one. All right. Thanks, Devon. OK, so now I know that talking about no changes happening might seem boring and pointless, but it's really not, because it means that we can use this as kind of our home base. We can, If we start with this and make a little change, then we can see what changes cause what. Does that make sense? Instead of just shooting in the dark, we'll have something that we can use as an anchor. So for example, let's just cause one little change to this and see how that affects our, affects our drawing. For example, what if we have, instead of, what if our first number, our entry in the first row, first column, is a negative one? What if we have negative one, zero, zero, one? Well, Let's give it a shot. Negative one, zero, one. Oh, well, our unit square, which once again, I'll zoom in the same amount. Zero, one, two, zero, one, and two. Eh. There we go. OK. So we have negative 1, 0, 0, 1. And we need to multiply it by the unit square. 
which has points at 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. So let's try it. So, we have 0, 0 gives 0, negative 1, 0 gives negative 1, negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1, 0 plus 0 is 0. On to the next row, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1. All right. So let's read off our results. Our first point is still at 0, 0. But our second point is now at negative 1, 0. Our third point is at negative 1, up 1. And our last point is at over 0, up 1. Draw the shape. And there we go. So what do you think? What do you think happened here? So it looks like it reflected. But are we sure? Because remember that, yes, this could reflect it. Or this could, this could be a reflection, like, uh, let me see. This could be a reflection, like going from this to going to this. But it also could have been a rotation going like this. Either way, it will give us a very similar looking result. So we need to, so we need to figure out how to tell if this is a reflection or a rotation. The way that we can do that is we can label each point and then see where they end up. So our point A, our first point, is that one on the origin. Our second point, 1, 0, is out here. There's B. Our third point is 1, 1 here. And our last point is here. Now, where did our results give us? Well, it looks like A and A prime are at the same spot. And B prime, our second column, is out here. C prime is out here. And D prime is right there. Now, if this was a rotation, if we follow, say, the lower right corner as we rotate. If this was a rotation, then our new, then B would be up here, but that's not B, that's D, you see? If this was a rotation, then what started as D here would end up out here. So, so Andrew, your first guess was correct. This is indeed a reflection. But what did it reflect across? What axis, what is the axis of reflection? It reflected across the y-axis. Now, OK, now someone wrote in the, uh, in the private chat, they wrote imaginary, question mark? Um, uh, you could think of it as that way. Remember that the imaginary, the imaginary axis and the y-axis are functionally the same thing. Now, 
since we aren't actually using any like complex numbers here, it would probably be more proper to call it the y-axis because we're looking at this in terms of geometry rather than complex numbers. But the y, the calling it the imaginary axis would be acceptable as well. All right. So let's add reflection over the y-axis to our big dumb table. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? No yelling yet? OK, so let's add that transformation to our list. Negative one, zero, zero, uh, positive one, times x, y. This reflected over the y-axis. Or imagine it if you prefer. So once again, let's go back to our home base, 1001, the, uh, the um, uh, bleh, identity matrix. I just totally blanked it for a moment. So instead of changing that first number into a negative one, what happens if we change the bottom one negative? So let's transform the unit square with this. So normally at this point, this is where I'd start asking you to do them on your own, but we have a limited amount of time, so we'll do this together. It kills me to not be like punting this off to you so that you can get more practice yourself, but let's keep trying or let's keep going with this. So go ahead and multiply along with me. is the ugliest unit square I've ever seen. All right, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Multiply them together. Zero, one, one, zero, 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 negative one, negative one. All right. So we end up with a point at zero, zero, a point at one, zero, a point at one, negative one, and a point at over zero, down one. There we go. You know what, let me redraw these. These are just ugly as sin, okay. Okay. Let's do it like this too. Okay. 
Then the transformed version has a point here, 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 and here. All right. So once again, our first guess is that this is probably an, another reflection. Looks like over the x-axis. But, but again, we really should make sure. So we'll go ahead and label each of our points. Our first point is at A. Our second point we'll call B. Our third point we'll call C. Our last point we'll call D. And where are all the images? Well, A, it looks like didn't change. Our first column is still 0, 0. Our second column, it looks like that didn't change either. So B is also B prime. Now C was over 1, up 1. Now it's over 1, down 1. So it's down here. And D was over 1, up 1. Now it's over 1, down 1. D prime. There we go. So that makes it pretty clear. Everything up here flipped down over the x-axis to down here, which makes this pretty definitively a reflection over the x axis. OK, so once again, we'll add that to our big dumb table. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Doesn't look like it. All right, so we'll go ahead and add that to our big dumb table. So L of xy equals 1, 0, 0, negative 1 reflects over the x-axis. OK, give me just one moment. OK. So there's a few more I want to get done. I have about, so there's a few more I want to get done. We're not, we're going to do this again tomorrow, but we're going to be looking at brand new transformations. But we still have a couple of old transformations for us to look at. Now this one's going to be a little bit funky, but I promise it's going to make sense in the end. So w let's transform
the unit square using So this is going to involve some futzing ab about with our home base, but it's still going to be pretty similar to the identity matrix. Let's transform the unit square using 0, negative 1, 1, 0. So in the name of getting a little bit more resolution, I'm going to make this our 1 and this our 1, just for the sake of making this look a little nicer. Go ahead and try this yourself. We well, you made good time, so there's a little, so we have enough time for you to do for you to do this one on your own. Transform the unit square using this matrix, and draw the result. I'll give you about two minutes. All right, let me see. So we have 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And we're multiplying it, multiplying it by the uh, unit square, which has points at 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2. will give a, or times a 2 by 4, rather, will give us a 2 by 4. Multiply them together. 0 and 0 make 0. 0 and 0 make 0. 0 and negative 1 makes negative 1. Oh, oops, did I mess, mess up here? Wait. No, yeah, that's negative 1. 0 and 0 make 0. 0 and 0, no, 1 and 0 makes 1. 1 and 0 makes 1. 1 and 0 makes 1. 0 and 0 makes 0. Did I do that right? Hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got this right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and draw the results already tell something here. There we go. So what do we got? Well, our first point is at 0, 0. Shocking nobody. Our next point is at, uh, our next point is at 
over zero up one. That's up here. I confused myself for a moment. Our next point is negative one up one here. And our last point is at negative one up zero here. So what does it look like happened here? Maybe a reflection again? Hmm. Well, once again, to be sure, let's look at what happened to each point. There's A, B, C, and D. And here we have our images, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Let's follow them along. A prime is at zero, zero. B prime is over zero up one, so B prime is up here now. C prime is left one up one here. And D prime is left one up one. So what happened? Hmm. Well, using this little die again, if we follow point B, the lower right corner, yeah, exactly. So Winona, Winona's got it, but how, so uh, if we follow this corner and rotate, rip, this corner is now pointing up. C rip, is now pointing that way, and D right there is now pointing that way. So it rotated. And a couple of people got it. It rotated around point A, which is the origin, and it rotated, someone else put it in the private chat, it rotated 90 degrees. All right. So will anyone yell at me if I take this away? We'll add that to our big dumb list. We had 0, negative 1, 1, 0, x, y, and this rotated 90 degrees around the origin. All right. Now, we'll look at where this arrangement came, comes from tomorrow when we look at rotating by any angle. But for right now, we still have one last very basic transformation. And this one's going to be the easiest of all of them. Yeah, it's even going to be easier than like dilating by one. But it is nonetheless an unfort, an important, an important transformation. Ah, transform. The unit square. With.
What happens if all of the numbers in our transformation matrix are zero? Well, this should be pretty easy. So the unit square, which once again for better resolution, So we have 0, 0, 0, 0 times the unit square, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. All right. So this is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 2, or a 2 by 4. Multiply them together to get a 2 by 4. Zero, zero. 0 and 0 make 0. And zero, and zero, and zero, and zero, and zero, and zero, and zero. This is the zero matrix. And the zero matrix times anything will give back another zero matrix. It will turn all the numbers into zero. So here's A prime, here's B prime, here's Z prime, C prime, and here's D prime. So let's draw the resulting points. There's A, there's B prime, there's C prime, and there's D prime. So what happened to our shape? Well, when our shape gets crunched down like this, we call this a collapse. It collapsed to a point on the origin. Now, this collapse, whenever you have a shape squinched down like that, collapse to the point where it isn't actually two-dimensional anymore, we call that a degenerate transformation. Now this is a po it's this turns it into a point which is a zero dimensional shape. So what it, we took a 2D shape and we turn whenever we turn a 2D shape into a 1D or a 0D shape that is called a degenerate transformation. OK. So we'll go ahead and add that, and that is our last transformation. That is the last transformation that we're going to look at today. So will anyone yell at me if I cover it up? OK. So, our last transformation, if L of xy equals 
it's zero, 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 zero times x, y, then it collapses to a point. at the origin. And this kind of degenerate transformation might seem kind of useless, but it's actually pretty important in astronomy. A, uh, if you know anything about astronomy, then you would know that collapsing an object down to a point, well, that sounds an awful lot like a black hole. Collapsing the, those kinds of degenerate transformations are important in stellar remnants in astronomy. All right. So today we learned, we saw what a bunch of, how to represent a bunch of different familiar transformations, dilation, reflection, rotation of 90 degrees, and a collapse down to a point as matrix transformations. Uh, tomorrow we're going to continue looking at this subject. We're going to Tomorrow we're going to look at some new transformations because matrices free us up to transform shapes in ways that we couldn't with complex numbers. So remember, tomorrow, second hour, go to your second hour teacher first thing in the morning so you can take your NWEA. Um, uh, there is a check for understanding uploaded. You are to, after, now, after in the afternoon, you should work on that. It involves you doing, well, what we just did, but with, a, but with some new matrices, including one of them that is, that is a transformation that we haven't seen yet. All right, so does anyone have any last minute questions before we end the session and go to lunch? Now remember, I will be around. I will be available for you to contact and and get help with after lunch. You can call the school who will put you through the classroom phone. You can try to rejoin this Zoom call. Or you can send me an email. Any one of those can put you in contact with me and we can and I can give you some help if you need it. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow unless we talk later this afternoon. <laughs>